I always look forward to reading the feature from our readers. I'm just amazed at the tactfulness you show in your responses. If there is a misprint or error, you humbly admit it. Yet, no matter how upset a reader may become, you never back down from the truth of God's word. And you even have a sense of humor. I got a nice chuckle from your response under the item Mistaken Identity in the February 22, 1991, issue. Curious about the validity of this statement, I typed, We apologize, in the search box of the Watchtower CD library. As a result, I found 11 instances of apologies and or acknowledgments of mistakes. Here are a few examples. I was in the hospital reading the January 8, 2000 issue with the cover series Bloodless Medicine and Surgery, The Growing Demand, when a senior cardiologist and a team of students came in. He said that the EKG, electrocardiogram, strip on the cover was backward. J.T. England A wake responds, the strip appeared as an artistic device. It was shown to some healthcare workers before its publication, however, the consensus among other medical personnel who have seen the drawing since then is that it was drawn incorrectly. We apologize for the error. I was a little disappointed and dismayed to see adult diapers mentioned in the article. The term is very demeaning to anyone who is in the situation of having to wear protective underwear. Not one of the commercial packages containing protective helps uses the word diaper. Name withheld, United States. Awake responds. Thank you for bringing this point to our attention. Our heart goes out to anyone who is dealing with serious health problems, and we certainly do not want to add to a person's suffering by using terms that some may consider to be demeaning. We apologize for any distress this may have caused our readers. The series Science Fiction, A Glimpse into Our Future? December 8, 1995, was thoroughly enjoyable. However, the picture of Jules Verne on page 3 would seem to be that of William Morris, a 19th-century artist and writer. R.G., United States Awake responds, a number of readers caught this mistake. A clerical error was made, and our file photo of William Morris was mislabeled. We apologize for the mix-up. In your issue of November 22, 1986, you featured a story entitled The Snatcher Lives Up to Its Name. The picture on page 20 of the article, which the Zoological Society of San Diego provided, is not a harpy eagle. It is a Guiana crested eagle. The harpy eagle is the world's largest eagle, and you have disgraced it by showing a picture of a spindly-legged, snake-eating bird. NR, United States. Awake responds, we have received from the Zoological Society of San Diego the following, I'm sorry to report that the photo you ran as a harpy eagle is indeed a crested eagle. Apparently, the two birds are very much alike in appearance. It would take a very sharp eye to tell the difference. We, apologize for the misidentification. We make the utmost effort to properly identify our photos and we appreciate it being called to our attention if there is a question. As can be seen, these all appear in the series from our readers in the Awake magazine. Does this mean that mistakes only occur in articles presented in the Awake? No. The February 2017 issue of the Watchtower contains this frank admission. The governing body is neither inspired nor infallible. Therefore, it can err in doctrinal matters or in organizational direction. In fact, the Watchtower Publications Index includes the heading Beliefs Clarified, which lists adjustments in our scriptural understanding since 1870. Of course, Jesus did not tell us that his faithful slave would produce perfect spiritual food. Adjustments in our scriptural understanding since 1870. So, the Watchtower organization is telling its readers that they have been making mistakes for over 100 years. This raises the question, if they admit they can err in doctrinal matters or organizational direction, why don't they apologize for those errors as well? Instead of admitting their mistakes, why do they instead, focus on the corrections, listing them in the February 2017 Watchtower as beliefs clarified? Why, in the very next paragraph, are they treated as, rather than mistakes or errors, 
evidence of divine guidance, as if God considered them truths originally but just made it easier for others to see. Evidence of Holy Spirit The Holy Spirit has helped the governing body to grasp scriptural truths not previously understood. For example, reflect on the list of beliefs clarified that was referred to in the preceding paragraph. Surely, no human deserves credit for discovering and explaining these deep things of God. 1 Corinthians 2.10 reads, For it is to us God has revealed them through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches into all things, even the deep things of God. The governing body echoes the Apostle Paul who wrote, These things we also speak, not with words taught by human wisdom, but with those taught by the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2.13 After centuries of apostasy and spiritual darkness, can anything other than Holy Spirit explain the rapid increase in spiritual understanding since 1919? So, in the previous paragraph, they admit to not being inspired. How is it possible then in this paragraph for them to claim that they echo the Apostle Paul who was inspired? How can they say that their words are not taught by human wisdom? Clearly, the previous published information was erroneous. Did the Holy Spirit make mistakes? Of course not. So why not just humbly apologize for past mistakes? What's the problem? The Watchtower comments on what failure to admit mistakes reveals about a person. Many people equate humility with humiliation. World rulers seem to feel this way. Although entire nations submit to their will, political leaders shrink from the challenge of humbly admitting their errors. Hearing a ruler say, I am sorry is newsworthy. When a former government official recently apologized for his failure in a fatal disaster, his words made headlines. Note how one dictionary defines humility, the quality of being humble or having a lowly opinion of oneself. The opposite of pride or haughtiness. So humility describes the view that a person has of himself, not the opinion that others have of him. Humbly admitting his mistakes and sincerely asking for forgiveness does not humiliate a man, rather, it enhances his reputation. The Bible states, Before a crash the heart of a man is lofty, and before glory there is humility. Proverbs 18:12. Regarding politicians who do not apologize for their errors, one observer said, Unfortunately they seem to think that such an admission is a sign of weakness. Weak and insecure people hardly ever say, sorry. It is large-hearted and courageous people who are not diminished by saying, I made a mistake. The same is true for those without political power. Could the same also be true of the governing body? No. Absolutely not. The reason Tony Morris might say that, is because during the 147th Gilead graduation, Garrett Lush, told the audience that they do apologize. In a 1976 Watchtower, an apology was made for statements that stirred excitement about the year 1975. In the book, uh, or in the Watchtower, March 15, a comment is made, and it says that in modern times, such eagerness commendable in itself has led to attempts to set dates for the desired liberation from the suffering and troubles that are uh, the lot of persons throughout the earth, with the appearance of the book Life Everlasting in Freedom of the Sons of God and its comments as to how appropriate it would be for the millennial reign of Christ to parallel this seventh millennium of man's existence, considerable expectation was aroused regarding the year 1975. There were statements made then and thereafter stressing that this was only a possibility. Unfortunately, however, says the Watchtower, along with such cautionary information, there were other statements published that implied that such realization of hopes by that year, 1975, was more of a probability than a mere possibility. It is to be regretted, admits the Watchtower, it is to be regretted that these latter statements apparently overshadowed the cautionary ones and contributed to a build-up of 
the expectation already initiated. In its issue of July 15, 1976, the Watchtower, commenting on the inadvisability of setting our sights on a certain date, stated, If anyone has been disappointed through not following this line of thought, he should now concentrate on adjusting his viewpoint, seeing that the word uh, that it was not the word of God that failed or deceived him and brought disappointment, but that his own understanding was based on wrong premises. In saying anyone, the watchtower included all disappointed ones of Jehovah's Witnesses, hence including persons having to do with the publication of the information that contributed to the build-up of hopes centered on that date. End of quote. So, very humbly, the Watchtower admitted that, June 15, 1976. Was this really an honest and sincere apology? What were some of those statements that contributed to a buildup of expectations? In an article entitled, Why Are You Looking Forward to 1975?, it was stated, One thing is absolutely certain, Bible chronology, reinforced with fulfilled Bible prophecy, shows that 6,000 years of man's existence will soon be up, yes, within this generation. This is, therefore, no time to be indifferent and complacent. This is not the time to be toying with the words of Jesus that, concerning that day and hour, nobody knows, neither the angels of the heavens nor the Son, but only the Father. To the contrary, it is a time when one should be keenly aware, that the end of this system of things is rapidly coming to its violent end. As that date drew closer, more definite statements were made. Yes, since the summer of 1973, there have been new peaks in pioneers every month. Now there are 20,394 regular and special pioneers in the United States, an all-time peak. That is 5,190 more than there were in February 1973 a 34% increase. Does that not warm our hearts? Reports are heard of brothers, selling their homes and property, and planning to finish out the rest of their days in this old system in the pioneer service. Certainly this is a fine way, to spend the short time remaining before the wicked world's end. Just like a runner when he's running a course and he gets near to the end just about the time when he thinks he just can't go in and on any further, he realizes, well, there's the go ahead of it. He's come around the last lap and there it is. Well, all of a sudden he just seems to get some reserve power from nowhere and with a sudden surge of energy on he goes to break the finish line rope and win the prize. Well now, as Jehovah's Witnesses, as runners, even though some of us have become a little weary, it almost seems as though Jehovah has provided meat in due season, because he's held up before all of us a new goal, a new year, something to reach out for, and it just seems it's given all of us so much more energy and power in this final burst of speed for the finish line. And that's the year 1975. There's been a lot of talk about the year. In fact, even this week, some individuals have uh, been wondering, well, what does it mean? Or do we dare talk about it? Uh, uh, is it something we can discuss among ourselves, even though we might talk, not talk about it too much in public? Do we really know what it means? Well, we don't have to guess what the year 1975 means, if we read the Watchtower, because the Watchtower has been very explicit as to what the year 1975 means for us. If you wish to write down the page 262 in the 1967 issue of the Watchtower, we read, what does the year 1975 mean for humankind? The end of 6,000 years of human existence and possibly the time when God executes the wicked and starts off a thousand year reign under his son Jesus Christ. 
unquote. What does it say? The end of 6,000 years of human existence, and that's all? No. It gave us a little more to think about there. Did it say, for certainty, the time when God executes the wicked and starts off the thousand-year reign by Jesus Christ? No. But it did give us a glimmer of light. It says, possibly, possibly the time when God executes the wicked and starts off the thousand-year reign of his son, Jesus Christ, 1975. Doesn't that give you a little bit of uh, excitement about the future? Even if there is the possibility that that's it, when God will bring the battle of Armageddon and clean this whole earth off, and you'll be ushered right into a paradise earth forevermore, never again to be afflicted with this satanic old system of things. It will be gone down. Well, it should excite all of us. There are the skeptics who say, well, I'm not going to think about it, not worry about it, not even going to pay attention to it. Well, now remember, brothers, the faithful and discreet slave is used by Jesus Christ to do what? Jesus says to provide meat in due season. This is meat, and it's come at the right time, and it's in its due season, and it's not wrong to think about it and to look forward to it. As one brother put it, stay alive to 75. Also, in 1975, Fred Franz went on a world tour, going from one convention to the next, giving the talk, What is the Significance of 1975? In it, he speaks of 1975 as a year of great possibilities tremendous probabilities. Yet, when that year passed by uneventfully, it had to be admitted that this building up of excitement was wrong. But this admission did not come immediately. It was not until four years later, that the Watchtower finally printed a statement that addressed the issue. In modern times, such eagerness commendable in itself has led to attempts to set dates for the desired liberation from the suffering and troubles that are uh, the lot of persons throughout the earth, with the appearance of the book Life Everlasting in Freedom of the Sons of God and its comments as to how appropriate it would be for the millennial reign of Christ to parallel this seventh millennium of man's existence, considerable expectation was aroused regarding the year 1975. There were statements made then and thereafter stressing that this was only a possibility. Unfortunately, however, says the Watchtower, along with such cautionary information, there were other statements published that implied that such realization of hopes by that year, 1975, was more of a probability than a mere possibility. It is to be regretted, admits the Watchtower, it is to be regretted that these latter statements apparently overshadowed the cautionary ones and contributed to a build-up of the expectation already initiated. In its issue of July 15, 1976, the Watchtower, commenting on the inadvisability of setting our sights on a certain date, stated, If anyone has been disappointed through not following this line of thought, he should now concentrate on adjusting his viewpoint, seeing that the word, uh, that it was not the word of God that failed or deceived him and brought disappointment, but that his own understanding was based on wrong premises. In saying anyone, the watchtower included all disappointed ones of Jehovah's Witnesses, hence including persons having to do with the publication of the information that contributed to the build-up of hopes centered on that date. End of quote. The article referred to in this 1980 Watchtower is entitled, A Solid Basis for Confidence. It appeared in the Watchtower, July 15, 1976, page 441, paragraph 15. Does that sound like an apology to you?
Do the words we apologize appear anywhere in this article? If anyone has been disappointed, through not following this line of thought, what line of thought? The previous two sentences say. But it is not advisable for us to set our sights on a certain date, neglecting everyday things we would ordinarily care for as Christians, such as things that we and our families really need. We may be forgetting that, when the day comes, it will not change the principle that Christians must at all times take care of all their responsibilities. So that, is the proper line of thought, they should have been following. Does the Watchtower go on to apologize for making the bold statement in the August 15, 1968 Watchtower This is not the time to be toying with the words of Jesus that concerning that day and hour nobody knows, neither the angels of the heavens nor the sun, but only the Father? Do they apologize for commending persons that sold their homes and properties? No. What the Watchtower goes on to say is you should now concentrate on adjusting your viewpoint, seeing that it was not the Word of God that failed or deceived you and brought disappointment but that your own understanding was based on wrong premises. In other words, get over it. Even if this is an admission that the premises, on which your understanding was based, were wrong, there is no apology. Rather, it is stated that you are better off, having gone through the experience. However, say that you are one that counted heavily on a date, and, commendably, set your attention more strictly on the urgency of the times and the need of the people to hear and say now you temporarily feel somewhat disappointed. Are you really the loser? Are you really hurt? We believe you can say that you have gained and profited by taking this conscientious course. Also you have been enabled to get a really mature, more reasonable viewpoint. And, who are those responsible for the publication of the information? Does that include those responsible for approving what was published? Did they not claim to be guided by God? How can allowing the publication of conflicting information, that the coming of the end in 1975 was both a possibility and a probability ever be described as faithful and discreet? Additionally, it must be asked, why did it take four years for the organization to address this issue? Does any of this provide evidence of humility? During the 2017 Regional Convention of Jehovah's Witnesses, a video entitled, Cultivate Qualities That Promote Endurance was played. Notice how the video portrayed what happened. You see, back then, some were looking to a certain date as signifying the end of this old system of things. A few even went so far as selling their homes and quitting their jobs. I admit, I was ready to see this old system go away too. But something just didn't seem right. Both at meetings and in my personal study, I was reminded of what Jesus said. Nobody knows the day or hour. I was dedicated to Jehovah, not a date. After that year came and went, most of those who had wrong expectations made the needed adjustments, and they stayed. We didn't run away, and we didn't give up. We trusted in Jehovah. Why was it presented as if a few publishers had wrong expectations and needed to adjust their thinking? Why was it not mentioned that at the meetings, some witnesses were commended for selling their homes in order to spend more time preaching? Why was it not mentioned, as it was in the 1980 Watchtower, that even persons having to do with the publication of the information contributed to the build-up of hope centered on that date? Would you consider it a sincere apology if a person covered over uncomplimentary conduct in his past and provided a less than accurate picture so as to gain favor with the public? In an article entitled, Why Be Truthful? The February 1, 2007 Watchtower states, Another factor behind lying is fear, fear of the consequences or of what others may think if the truth is told. It is only natural that people wish to be liked or accepted by others. This desire, however, can move them to distort the truth, even if only a little, in order to cover up shortcomings, to hide unflattering details, or simply to leave a good impression. This is just one example, of the organization, making doctrinal errors over the course of its history. And remember, they have admitted to doing this for over 100 years but they have also admitted to committing errors in organizational direction. Some of those errors brought much more hardship on obedient witnesses than the mere causing of disappointment. In a previous video, Jehovah's Witnesses Are You Closed-Minded, I said I would share examples of persons that had been adversely affected by policies issued by the governing body.
Due to the length of this video, let's save that for the next time. But for now, thanks for watching.